Is Uncle Mo gonna go? Special number four. Huh? He'll watch his work after the he break. He must be your best friend yeah. in this in for this race. I'd like to have him in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it'll, it'll be good race if they all go. You see Alex being further back than he was in the Gold Cup, given the nature uh, of the pace We'll this just time. have to wait and see what the track is. Right. You know, thank you. You know, we had to kind of change our plans a little bit the last time because of the way the track was doing in New York. So right. We'll watch the races that day, and Alex was very astute about watching races. And so we'll, we'll just wait and see how the weather is. Uh, what makes you think a mile and a quarter is within his scope? Um, he's done nothing in any of his uh, races or to indicate to me that he won't do it. Um, I think with any horse, until they prove it, you don't know. But uh, uh, I've seen him do some exceptional things in the morning, and he's done some exceptional things in the afternoon. So, um, you know, I, I think when you break down the race that, that he is the most talented horse coming in. He's run the fastest races. He ran a race here in the juvenile that was um, as good as any two-year-old will ever run. But this is an overwhelming performance by Uncle Bo, the son of Indian Charlie. John Velasquez just got to point him in the right direction. And, uh, you know, we'll know on a mile and a quarter when we, when we get there, but I've seen uh, nothing to indicate that he won't. The Santa Anita Oaks came up and then Zazu almost caught her and if they'd gone any further she would have caught her. Okay, so I go down the steps and say to the guys in the winter circle, I said, that's the end of it. I talked to Scott Shore. Oh. We, we had suspected it already, but I said, we don't need to do this to her again because we're going to kill her if we go the wrong oh. way. So it was instantly a, a decision. We kept a very aggressive game plan. We ducked nobody. We went into the backyards of Keeneland, Belmont and Saratoga to do all our racing with her. And here we are, you know, as going into this race is the favorite, but she's definitely a better filly going seven furlongs than she is at a route of ground. It's a beautiful thing to watch horses where they belong. Right. You know? Yeah, that's exactly it's, right. You're not concerned about the gap now. No, not at all. Not at all. Not she's easy. working for you as well. Yep. Not, not even a second's wasted time worried about the three month layoff. No. Rick has every intention of running her next year, uh, and she sure does not look to be having any issue to think otherwise. Uh, she's doing just as well now as she did for the uh, very first race this year, so we're very happy with the, the way she, the soundness that she's showing. Uh, and, and with hard spun, you know, he was a little more one-dimensional. We knew what we had to do when we went out with him. You know, the, the, the thing that year was we was not going to make it easy on Lawyer Ron. We were going to go out and, uh, and try to take care of him early. And, uh, and we were able to do that. But in turn, it kind of set us up for uh, Curlin to come and get us. For this year, we get to sit back and see how the race unfolds. You know, it doesn't matter to her where she is. Uh, if Uncle Mo and Game On Dude and a few of them others want to get out and really rolling, she may get shuffled back a bit. But, we're, you know, we're not worried about it. And, uh, and then if they're really worried about trying to get that mile and a quarter and make sure Uncle Mo gets a mile and a quarter and really rates him, then we're liable to be, uh, be breathing down his neck a long ways. So I, I said there may not be a bigger fan of Blind Luck out there than me. I love her. Uh, I mean, she, I say she's like Proud Spell. She was like Proud Spell, but, but did it better. 